come apartment hunting with me. Let's go! Hi everyone! If you're new here, my name is Yui and in this video, I will be sharing with you guys my New York City apartment hunting process. To share a little bit about myself, I moved to New York City last year and lived in Williamsburg with two other housemates. This year, I'll also be living with two housemates and we are primarily looking for apartments in Brooklyn. Today, I'll be sharing with you what we were looking for in an apartment, our budget, and just some overall information about what is necessary to make the move into the city. I have six apartments that we toured and I will also be revealing which apartment that we eventually signed. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's go through what I was looking for in my new apartment. For my non-negotiables, I was looking for a 3-bedroom with at least 1.5 bath. I was also looking for a place that is less than an 8-minute walk from this station in a neighborhood that I would feel safe walking alone at night in. My last place had walls that were painted a dark blue slash gray color and my window was also north-facing which I was really sad about. So for my next place, I was looking for rooms with a lighter wall color and also lots of natural lighting. And lastly, we were all looking for a place with at least a laundry in the building. Last year, we would all go to a laundromat, which was a struggle just because it was a four-floor walk-up, especially when the load was heavy. It was just, it was a lot. And also like when it was snowing and stuff, it would be slippery outside and dangerous. So laundry in building is a must. Moving on to our nice to have. Our first was closet space slash storage. Especially in the living room, uh, we tend to bulk buy a lot of things that we share such as toilet paper, uh, paper towels, detergent, things like that. So it would be really nice for us to have a already built-in storage space in the living room. On top of that, we also wanted our individual rooms to have closet space as well. It wasn't a must-have just because some rooms in New York just don't come with closet space but it would be nice to have just because we didn't want to buy another wardrobe for a closet that would take up more space from what little space we already have our second nice to have would be a dishwasher it's not like we would use a dishwasher often but it would be nice to have especially when we have a lot of people over and we have a lot of dishes to clean it would just be a fast and easy way to get that done our third and last nice to have would be a nice neighborhood. What we mean by that is that we would really appreciate a neighborhood that was lively and had a lot of people. So that would mean a lot of cafes, shops, restaurants, parks, things like that. Since we are looking for a three bedroom, our overall budget combined was 4.5 to 5k. Just for reference, our last place was 4.7k with 3 bed and 2.5 bath. They had a laundry in the building, but it was just one machine each and a little bit janky. It was also in a prime area with lots of restaurants and cafes. We were all comfortable spending around 1.5k, but I was also willing to spend a little bit more if it meant that we would get a laundry in unit and in the case that we were able to find a place with two bathrooms if I was able to get my own. So this is what we're working with. And before I begin the tours, to those who are interested in making the move to New York City, I will be sharing what kind of documents and forms you should have prepared. First, depending on the place, you would need a copy of either one or two photo IDs. If you are employed, you would also need proof of employment. And in the case that you are a student, you would probably need your acceptance letter and or transcript. You would also need a copy of your most recent tax return and depending on the place, you might also need the prior W-2 form. Most places would also ask for a copy of your most recent 2-3 to three bank statements and 2-3 to three pay stubs. And in the case that you are self-employed, they might also ask for a letter from your accountant verifying your length of employment, your income, and type of business. And one of the most important things to know about renting in New York City is that you need to be making at least 40 times the rent. So in my case, if I were to find a place that was 5k, we would all need to be making 200k combined. In the case that you are unable to meet this requirement, you would need a guarantor, which is somebody who pledges to cover the rent cost in the case that you are unable to do so. This can be anyone, so family member, friend, just as long as they get their contract notarized and they make at least 80 times the rent. Okay, I think that covers everything. I will now be showing you guys the six apartments that I toured. Let's go! 
So the first apartment that we toured was the one that I like to call the one that got away. I wanted to get a head start on the apartment hunting process so I ended up touring this place around two months before my move out date. Located on the southeast tip of Clinton Hill, this apartment was brand new built in 2022 and it is a five minute walk from the nearest station. The building itself came with many great amenities such as a package room, virtual doorman, bike room, gym, library, and terrace area. The first thing you see when walking in is the kitchen, which was a dream. The counter space was huge and it came with lots of cabinets and storage space. On the other side of the kitchen was the first full bathroom, which was very clean and new, and it also came with a tub. The first room would be the master. This room could fit a queen, and I really liked how each room had huge windows, which allows for lots of natural light. The bathroom in this bedroom is completely private, with two sinks and a standing shower. And my favorite part, the walk-in closet space. Right outside the room, there is a closet with an in-unit washer and dryer, as well as a closet for storage. The other two rooms were next to each other, and each had ample space and closets as well. The third room had access to the private terrace, which can also be accessed from the living room. This would be a really nice place to hang out in the warmer months, especially in the mornings and evenings. And as nice as this place was, my roommates and I decided that it was still a little bit too early in the apartment hunting process because we still had two months to go and this place was also looking for tenants to sign immediately. And as we had a lot of time left, we were pretty confident that we would be able to find a place at a better price point and also in a better neighborhood. One interesting thing to note though is that two weeks after I toured, the price went up 60% to $8,000 and it was shortly rented out. The second unit that we toured was in between Bed-Stuy and Clinton Hill, a one minute walk from the nearest station. Right from the beginning, a huge thing that I did not like about this apartment is the accessibility. The only subway line in this area is the G train, which is also nicknamed as the ghost train. This line only runs between Brooklyn and Queens, so every time I wanted to go into Manhattan, I would always have to transfer at least once. But since the neighborhood is a university, it is very safe and feels very cozy. There are lots of cute restaurants, shops, and cafes as well. The building had an in-building laundry, backyard, and rooftop. Our unit was on the third floor, and right when you walk in, you are greeted by the kitchen. Although it was nice, it was tiny. The one thing we loved about this unit though was the clearly separate area for either a living room or a dining room, which connected to a private balcony. It was a vibe. The rooms itself were quite small, and we weren't a fan of how some of the rooms had very small closet space, and the room shape was very interesting with these random pillars. It did however come with two full bathrooms which is a steal. The unit was offered at $4,000 which was very below our budget but because the rooms and kitchens were small and the inconvenient location we decided against applying. We do however think this unit would be perfect for a university student. The third unit was an interesting one. It is located in Park Slope and is a newly renovated unit and it was a six minute walk from the station that had three subway lines. The listing itself looked amazing online through the photos, but you know what they say about apartment hunting in New York? You always have to tour the places in person because you just never know. When we went, we actually ran into a current tenant who told us not to move here. She said that the management was terrible and just doesn't care and she also mentioned that the hot water and radiator is always down, which would be terrible for the winter months. So yeah, that was great to hear, but since we were already there, we decided to check it out. A good tip when apartment hunting is if you happen to run into a current resident, it would be insightful to ask them what they think of the building. And if there's any problems with the water, electricity, heat, rats, roaches, and so on. Anyways, the unit actually looked pretty good. Walking in, you are greeted with two full bathrooms and an in-unit laundry uh, washer and dryer. The kitchen, similar to the unit before, was quite small, but we liked how there was space for a living slash dining room and that it had a window. The unit came with a dishwasher too, which was a plus. The rooms were small, but slightly more spacious than the unit before, and we did like how it had radiators. If we were to nitpick, some of the rooms were still a little dirty, and we did not like the view outside the windows facing the courtyard. There were also some cracks in the walls and floors, which is always concerning for warmer months with bugs. Other than that, the unit seemed fine, but then we took a peek outside and then we realized that the courtyard area was where we take out the trash and it was just so nasty and there were rats. A lot of rats. 
One of my housemates was very intrigued by them and we went to go greet them but yeah, I knew I would never be able to take out the trash. At the end of the day, we didn't sign because of what the girl said and we also didn't want to risk not having hot water and heat. And I'm so glad that we didn't because three months later, the listing is still up. The next unit is sort of a meme. We like to call it the friend's apartment. One of my housemates found it and honestly, it's a steal. It's right across the street from our current apartment, which means that the moving in process would be fairly easy for us. And the price, if split evenly, was 1.1k per person, which is crazy cheap. The thing about this place is that it is a 5 bed, 6 bathroom and I did happen to have two friends who were very conveniently looking for a place to move in together. So with them and us, we were perfectly 5 people. The concept of this place is unique. You are greeted by 5 tall black doors when you enter the unit, most of which were closets with one being a washer and dryer and the last one being a full bathroom. The kitchen was pretty spacious, although I was a little concerned about the fridge space with 5 people. It also came with a dishwasher and the floating island. There was one bedroom towards the entrance facing the main street and the other four were next to each other in the back and each had a sunroof. What was absolutely crazy about this place was that each room had their own private bathroom and closet. At the end of the hall, there was a terrace as well. Interestingly, the unit also had a basement for even more space, which we loved, but it also connected to the boiler room of the entire building. I personally did not like how the boiler room was connected. It gave me very weird energy. The price was amazing at 5.5k and the location was also great but we decided against it because of the small rooms, the fact that it was on the first floor, the creepy boiler room, and because it was left very messy. The fifth unit is in Williamsburg as well on the southeast side. It was sort of in the same place as my previous apartment, just a little bit south, but my roommates and I agreed that we weren't a big fan of the area. But it is a six minute walk from the J and M line. Once you enter, you are greeted by the kitchen slash living dining room. And from the start, it just wasn't our favorite because the kitchen was a little small and there was no natural light, but it did have a dishwasher. Right next to the entrance, there was a closet and it came with two full baths, which were very clean and modern. It had a washer and dryer in unit as well. The rooms itself were okay in size. It could have probably fit a queen or a full and a desk and each room had a closet. The one detail that I didn't like was the white brick wall and the fact that they painted over what looks like a fireplace. The place looked pretty solid and it was very well kept but because we didn't like the train lines, the neighborhood, and the finishing touches in each room, we decided against this unit. And finally, this is the last apartment that we toured. It is in a prime neighborhood with lots of cafes, restaurants, and shops open until very late at night and it is only a three minute walk from the station. As soon as you walk in, there is the first bedroom, which was a decent size and had a huge closet space. I personally really liked the gray wall and we also liked that each room had a radiator. Across the hall, there is the in-unit washer and dryer, which is next to the first bathroom. We loved how both bathrooms had a tub and the amount of knobs each shower had is honestly the most extra thing I've ever seen. The living slash dining slash kitchen area was stunning with three windows, which allowed for a lot of natural light. I I also like that it came with a radiator as well. The kitchen itself was on the bigger side with enough counter space to cook along with a dishwasher. The second room was my favorite with a huge gray stone brick wall and two windows. Same with the first room and living room, it gets sunlight in the morning as it is a southeast facing window. The closet space is the smallest out of the three, but since it had two levels, I don't think space would become too big of an issue. The third room is around the same size with one bigger window and closet space. It also technically has a rooftop with views of Manhattan, which is pretty cool but also isn't too big of a deal for us. This place checked off everything but one thing on our checklist, which is the storage space in the living room. But we didn't really see this as too big of an issue here just because the room was so spacious. So after a few days of pondering, we decided to submit an application and we got the place. I'm actually filming this video in my new room and it's already been a few weeks and I'm really happy, especially with the amount of natural light that this entire apartment gets and the in-unit washer and dryer. I'm really excited for this new chapter in my life, living with two of my friends. And I actually did film a vlog of us moving in, which should be coming out shortly after this one. I know this video is quite long, but for those of you that made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Oh my god. Classic New York.